you know this was an area that in practice i found a whole bunch of fish on the jerk bait they would follow the jerk bait they would they would chase it all the way to the boat on active target and i remembered where this area was i marked this area and i basically expanded on it during the tournament as you can see here i'm hooked up that's that keeper fish that's a 14 incher just barely scraped 14 inches long you can see I'm measuring this fish a bunch trying to make sure that it's gonna scrape that line it was barely barely on that line it did end up making it but just by a fraction but it's a good feeling to get that first fish in the boat this is definitely not a fish that I wanted to weigh at the end of the day though so putting the live well here getting out my culling clips pretty cold morning this morning I uh, wasn't planning on starting with the drop shot on active target but I saw a few and decided to pitch to them same deal here pitching to fish that I see on the screen the key was to barely barely move the bait as you can see I'm shaking the rod I'm hooked up again this fish was not quite a keeper. Um, this fish was a lot fatter than that first one. It probably weighed more than the first one. In fact, I'm almost positive it weighed more than that first one, but this fish was actually not quite a keeper. It was a 13 and a half incher, so I had to toss that fish back. It's a 14 inch minimum on Raver. So that was kind of a bummer. I was thinking that one was for sure a keeper. So I, I saw a bunch more fish, but I couldn't get them to react, so I decided to pull the trolling motor and move spots. And my plan was to move short by, there were, or close by, there was a bridge, a submerged bridge. And I'd seen a whole bunch of fish on it in, in practice, but I really barely stopped and fished. I made a few casts in practice and didn't get any bites, but I just had a feeling I could pull out there with some finesse tactics and maybe get some bites. So moving, moving out there to that bridge right now. This is actually in Little Caney Creek. If you guys are interested in what part of the lake I was in, this is Little Caney. This bridge that I'm running to is kind of at the mouth of Little Caney. It's a pretty big community spot. A lot of guys stop on it. One of the main reasons that I went out there and stopped was because nobody was there. It's one of those deals that I knew I probably wasn't gonna catch a great big one. I mean, obviously I could potential was there but I was more interested in just putting some keeper fish in the boat at this point pulling a crankbait out here I didn't end up, end up catching anything on that crankbait but I did pull it out just to have it on the front deck big deep plug I think I had a 8xd on there at that point in time but I ended up switching it over to a 10xd just so I could touch bottom I did throw it for a while didn't get any bites on it adjusting my active target right now I'm setting the distance uh, depth distance deeper so that I can see the bottom and I'm adjusting the sensitivity just a little bit first bait that I picked up was a Nico rig with a five inch stick bait and I switched out from a lighter nail weight to a little bit heavier nail weight I was starting the lighter nail weight shallow and the heavier one out here in this deeper water you can see I'm hooked up here this was right away when I got out there. The camera boat had just pulled up on me. <laughs> it's a dink. So, sorry about the wind noise. I'll talk throughout this whole clip, so hopefully it drowns out some of the wind. But basically here I'm just targeting some individual fish that I'm seeing on the screen on active target. As you can see, I keep looking down at the graph, just trying to make sure that my bait's falling right there to those fish. And I'm just barely moving that Nico rig along the bottom. The key with the Nico rig is to keep slight tension in your line at almost all times. You want that worm to be standing up on end and, and shaking, uh, moving almost constantly across the bottom. Not quickly though, you just want to keep semi-tension in your line. There we go, hooked up again. This one felt a lot, you know, quite a bit better than that first one. I don't know why I walked to the back of the boat. There we go. There's a large mouth. He's all spotted up. He's pretty. Holding it up to get my picture taken of that giant. Keep it. Woohoo! Alright, guys, that's number two. About a pound and three quarters. He's all spotted up. Look how pretty that bass is. I saw that fish on active target. Off that Nico rig down there. Keep it happy. 
So here's another clip, same deal, same spot, same bait, Nico rig, five inch stick bait, casting the individual fish, there we go, hooked up again. This time, it was not a large mouth, it was actually a spotted bass. And this was actually the first spotted bass that I caught all week during practice and during the tournament. It was the only yeah, spotted bass I got. That's a key spotted spot. bass only have to be 12 inches on Rayburn. So that fish was a keeper, about a 13, 14 inch spot. And then here I made a pretty large move. I ran up to Indian Creek. This is up by the 147 bridge. And I'm actually active targeting one that I see in the creek channel right here. Uh, it was set up next to an individual stump. And I threw the Nico rig over there, same bait that I was catching them offshore on the, the bridge, but I actually switched over to that lighter nail weight and just barely, barely moving it. As you can see, these fish are really, really finicky, hard to get to bite. You know, I could get them to react to a jerk bait here and there, but the only other way I could really catch them was to completely do the opposite and just slow way down and finesse them with the Nico rig and the drop shot. So at this point, I only had three keepers in the boat. There we go, that's number four. All right guys, that's the number best four, fish. not a big one, but we gotta catch five before we can do anything. So we'll take them right now. Looking over at a couple of guys, there's a, a high school tournament going on and they were kind of working in towards me. And so that's why you see me looking over the other direction there. So this spot here, this is a pretty special little area that I found in practice. It had a lot of hydrilla lining the edges of this uh, creek going in. I can't tell you the actual name of it. I don't know. It's it's down lake from uh, Caney Creek, more towards the dam. This is a pretty nice fish. This was later in the day. This was probably around 12:30 or one o'clock, about one o'clock. Pretty late in the day. Still only had those four. This was a crucial fish right here. Filled that limit. All right, guys, we finally got number five. Grinded it out. I just broke one off a second ago. I don't know what happened. I was catching a whole bunch of small fish on the drop shot, and I didn't retie. So I regret that. I think it was a big one. I'm seeing a bunch of fish, but they're really, really hard to get to bite. Pitch to this one, he nose down on an active target. Grabbed it. That's the biggest one of the day. We need to keep catching it. So I don't know what happened here. I must have missed the hook set on my camera or something happened to the clip. But anyway, this was the next fish about not even three or four casts later. Another really quality fish. I was basically sitting on a grass line and I was pitching to these fish guess, on active target. That was a quick one. Definitely going to upgrade. That's a two, two and a quarter pounder. Starting to dial them in. They might be starting to turn on. We got to keep working on them. So the key, guys, was I was sitting still because I had my power poles down. Um, shout out to power pole. I definitely utilized those heavily on the second day. If I didn't have them, it would have been way more difficult to catch these fish. I was able to go up shallow, power pole down, and I was right on the top of the grass. And my, my active target was scanning out on the edge where it dropped off into the creek channel. And there was a little flat spot. And I was able to watch these fish cruise around the edge of the hydrilla line. And as you can see here, I'm just making short pitches to these individual fish that I was seeing on active target. And every once in a while, about, for a while there, it was about 50% or more of the fish that I was seeing were getting, you know, I was getting them to bite. And they were all pretty, pretty good quality. I missed a couple. I had one that I don't know what happened. I broke it off uh, just on the hook set. And, but I ended up catching uh, most of my weight on the second day here towards the end of the day. There's another good one. All these fish were solid keepers, you know, two to two and three quarter pound fish. Drop shotting with a three sixteenth ounce weight. I believe that I was using a eight pound or maybe an eight or ten pound liter. I believe it was ten pound liter to a ten pound braided line. Using a six inch right, guys, straight tail drop shot. Upgrade. Work. That's a two and a half pounder right there. We're starting to dial them in, guys picking them off on active target and there's guys all around us and nobody's catching them
just got done using that boat logic boat logics coaling beam that thing is awesome guys if you're if you're looking to get a good coaling beam that doesn't have super super sharp prongs on the end that like poke into everything check out that boat logics coaling beam it's really good quality but as you can see there those are that's kind of like the pitches i was talking about i was only pitching like 20 or 30 feet 35 feet maybe at the most a lot of these fish were really close to the boat but i was being stealthy since i was power pulled down was hardly making any noise at all with the trolling motor um you know every once in a while i would turn it to look but that was about the only noise i was making between that and the actual pinging of the active target that was about the only noise those fish could hear but i felt like the wind that i had and a little bit of chop was kind of disguising me well hooked up again every one of these fish was a huge uh, coal huge upgrade you know when you're fishing against these guys at this level ounces are, are massive at the end of the year you know one of these fish could be the amount of points that i need to, to make the championship or win aoi all right guys another one probably two and a quarter just working on seeing them on active target on these grass lines we're really catching them now i think they're turning on got to call this one for another one making big moves right now so it's super important that I put every one of these fish in the boat, make sure, there you go, you can see that culling beam again, uh, making sure that every cull that I make is, is important, you know, proper, and make sure that I'm getting rid of the right fish. Like I said, every ounce is, is huge in this, in this game. At the end of the year, it can mean a lot. So making sure I make the right decisions. It looks like green is the one to go. It's still a solid keeper. I think that was one that I had caught earlier on, on the drop shot. So there he goes, goes back, got rid of all my small fish at that point. And I believe that pretty much wraps it up. I might have missed one fish catch in there, guys. I don't know what happened. I think I missed one of the two and a half to two and three quarter pounders, but you guys got the idea. That's how I caught my entire bag the, the second day was sitting almost in one spot with the power poles down, just pitching a drop shot around. I was not planning on doing that. I knew there were fish in that area. That was not my intention going in there was to fish that way, but it worked out and I'm super, super glad that that was a decision that I made. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this week's video. Um, this is the first tournament of the season, Sam Rayburn. It's a wrap. Uh, I had a great tournament, ended up in 17th place overall. So I did fall short of making that top 10 cut, but I did have a great week. I cannot complain. I didn't have much coming into the tournament from practice. I had found fish, I had located them with active target, but as far as getting bites and putting fish in the boat during practice, I did not do very well. So I was super, super happy with how the tournament ended up going and thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for watching and if you're not already please hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed today's video smash that like button for me as well i'll catch you guys next time on another episode of jacob wall fishing the next video is probably going to be a little informational video it should be a good one for you guys. So I appreciate you guys and hopefully you have a good one.